ओके गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल गुड मॉर्निंग सर सिंस टुडे आई थिंक वन प्रोग्राम इज गोइंग ऑन फॉर वीक रिगार्डिंग द एम्प्लॉयमेंटी एनहांसमेंट एंड यूथ लाइवहुड ऑफ placement cell so from uh, analytical chemistry how many students have participated in that sir me i sajid bagwan okay sajid bagwan i uh, samar patil ek hai कंपनी है ना ते हो ते महिंद्रा टेक्स कैदरे हाँ सो महिंद्रा प्राइड मे प्लेसमेंट सेल थ्रू है साढ़े दहा न ट्रेनिंग सुरू हो रहा है तो वर वीक पूर्ण तो प्रोग्राम है सो इन दैट प्रोग्राम Uh, the schedule is from 10:30 onward i think sajid they have sent a link to you uh, so um, in this week we will uh, start the lecture at our regular time 9 but instead of 1 hour the lecture should be of 45 minutes that is 9 to 9:45 and then second lecture will be 9:45 to 10:30 so the um, those students who have enrolled for that program for this week that they should join and the third lecture will not be there so for this week only uh, two lectures are there and third lecture is uh, uh, almost cancelled because of this uh, activity mostly the students have enrolled for that of pg almost 70 to 80% i think from our side uh, there may possibility that the um, less number is there but we have to check from analytical suppose you can say that there are two but from other specialization we have to check how many students have enrolled for that activity and definitely that is beneficial to uh, all final year students so that activity is also simultaneously uh, run for bsc 3 but it is in the morning session so they avoid to uh, disturbance at a regular time inter of lecture so in the morning session uh, that was for um, that is actually uh, conducted for the bsc students that is ug and for pg uh, they have um, start the lecture that is a third batch mostly at 10 uh, 35 onwards so that's why that is, there is no any kind of disturbance is there so only we have to manage two lectures and one thing that you should join uh, immediately and uh, so it is very easy to um, start the lecture so just we have to check how many students are there and uh, remaining uh, students uh, why they are not attended just you have to check no doubt there should be uh, some uh, health problem as the uh, covid-19 pandemic is going on some are uh, having a seasonal problem also at this uh, situation because the uh, climate is changed day by day and because of that only there may possibility that some are having uh, health issues but they should mention on group so my request is that those who are having a problem at least they should send on the group so uh, why i am insisting on that because uh, when we have feel the number of students they have attended lecture uh, that record is already uh, to the office and they will ask or they are always ask why the uh, strength is less so at that time we have to give some answer no and that's why those who are not attend the lecture they having problem any problem but they should at least mention on whatsapp group so what will happen as today's lecture we have super say that there are 12 or 13 students so remaining four you know, why they are absent so that when they have mentioned on group so it is very easy for us to uh, explain the same thing to forward that thing okay so uh, on last lecture we have taken the test everyone know the how many marks they have got and also uh, yesterday i have sent the uh, material uh, whatever left for that two lectures and uh, 
also uh, home assignment is given to you so you should write down that and submit in this week now on last lecture we have focused on some basic part of chromatography uh, what are the terms that are involved in the chromatography and today uh, we should just carry forward that part and see the introduction regarding the uh, chromatography because this lesson is that is uh, crystal field or supercritical fluid chromatography uh, mostly uh, or even though they have given the 15 lectures uh, actually why they have uh, given 15 lecture i didn't know uh, actually uh, they include hplc and along with that they include this part that is uh, actually uh, requirement of this topic but whatever uh, that is uh, given so we have to focus on that so in that uh, topic uh, already i have told that you have to explain regarding introduction why uh, supercritical fluid chromatography having advantages over gas chromatography and hplc uh, then what is in by supercritical fluid or what is the instrumentation part that is required mostly again we know that in chromatography there are two phases mobile and uh, stationary phase on that we have to focus then as it is a part of uh, instrumentation under pressure we can carry out this uh, instrumentation so there should be a injector or instrumentation parts are there actually we have seen uh, in detail regarding mass so here also we have to just focus on that part which is uh, used in the um, instrumentation like uh, injector ohm pump column detector and then uh, application of uh, supercritical fluid chromatography so whatever that part is uh, given i don't think it required much more lecture but uh, whatever they have given we have to cover all the things uh, which are included in the syllabus okay so um, as on the last lecture we have already focus on what is meant by chromatography in that we have explained that is it is a greek word which is called color and graphene is nothing but right so it is the collective term uh, mostly useful in the separation of mixtures which are synthesized or or isolated and it is a very important analytical tool or techniques that is used in the laboratory not only in uh, research but also in the uh, suitable solvent that is called as a mobile phase and uh, which carries it through the structure holding another material it is called a stationary phase it is a constant phase and mobile phase is nothing but we have to use a um, mixture of solvents which having a different polarity and on the basis of that we have to get the separation of the mixture so the various uh, constituent of the mixture travels at different speed that can cause us to separation and on that basis we have to collect the different uh, um, samples uh, or solution in terms of 10 ml 20 ml 30 ml and we have to collect all frag fractions and then we have to check by using tlc whether they having a same spot and then we have to collect and remove the solvent then we can easily get the uh pure component so the separation is mostly based on the differential partition between the mobile and stationary phase actually this uh, chromatography was discovered by russian botanist in 1906 that is twist then chromatography is a group of method for separating a small quantitative uh actually not only small quantitative uh complex mixture but it is with very high resolution it is very a uh, good technique that is used Uh, or it is essential in uh, research and even uh, in environmental analysis also it is very good and even in a large quantity that is by quantitative analysis also we can use this chromatography so we have to use some advanced resolution that high resolution part we can include here then it is very useful to uh, qualitative as well as quantitative analysis mostly uh, the chromatography is applied um, in the separation of amino acids proteins carbohydrates biomolecules even though it is useful in the analysis of drugs hormones vitamins so that is not only in the pharmaceutical it is very useful because we have required very high purity of the sample for this biological activity and that's why we required chromatography and it is very useful for qualitative as well as quantitative analysis and this technique is useful to determine the molecular weight of proteins also and that's why it having a very wide scope and here it is very essential 
for uh, both industrial as well as uh, research in the uh, chemical field so mostly uh, it involves the following common steps are there that is the adsorption or retention of substance on stationary phase that is a constant phase and again the separation of uh, adsorption of substance by mobile by so in the influence of mobile phase whatever the uh, substance which have retained or adsorbed on the stationary phase they having a slow um, uh, rate of passing through mobile phase or those who are not having retention or not adsorbed on the stationary phase they can be fast move along with the mobile phase so on the basis of this um, rate we can easily separate out the each component and on the basis of polarity we have to adjust even though they are having a very close uh, rf value when we can observe on tlc even uh, we can recover the uh, separated um, substance by continuous flow of the mobile phase and that process is called resolution so that is nothing but by using the mobile phase and on the basis of their polarity each and every fraction we can collect it no doubt it requires more solvent to separation because uh, i have carried out uh, column chromatography in my research uh, almost all samples i have uh, prepared um, purification done by the column chromatography uh, because that required for, for biological activity that is uh, mostly uh, anti cancer and anti tubercular so when i have uh, observed uh, even though the sample is pure it is observed on tlc there is possibility that we have obtained some isomers are also there and they didn't observe on tlc and that's why we have to purify each and every sample by column chromatography and it requires more solvent and now uh, new resolutions are also available mostly in the research institute as well as in uh, uh, iits uh, like institute they use a flow uh, technique for column chromatography so by using uh, some um, uh, machines they can adjust the flow and it is very easy to um, because manually it requires uh, it is no doubt it is tedious process because only one person can do all the things it is very difficult then it is uh, very useful for the separation of qualitative and quantitative analysis now uh, the analytes when we can see some basic terms which are involved in the chromatographic technique that everyone know that things but uh, mostly uh, the question we ask in mcq and that's why i focused on that part the analyte is the substance that to be separated during chromatography chromatogram it is a visual output of this chromatograph then ulate is the mobile phase uh, which leaving through the column and ulit or eluent is the solvent that carries the analyte then detector that refers the instrument which is used for qualitative and quantitative detection of analytes after separation so the analyte chromatogram ulate eluent detector that are some common terms that are used in the chromatography mobile phase that can move a definite direction mostly uh, liquid and gas uh, are the mobile phases are there that we already see the classification of chromatography at uh, tybsc level so the mobile phase that can move through the chromatography column over the stationary phase where the sample is interact with a uh, stationary phase and that can get separated so on the basis of time that can taken for the uh, separation uh, that is called it as retention time that can pass through this system that is from column inlet to the detector under the set condition mostly this uh, part is in terms of instrument like gch plc so that is uh, having under pressure and we can cut out automatically so just we have to load the solvent system and once we have started then automatically the process is going on and we can recover the sample and just we have to observe on computer which sample is coming or which is detected so on that basis we have to change the polarity so that is a new already that process is carried out in very industry various industries as well as laboratories then a uh, sample that is called as analyte which can analyze the in by using chromatography solvents is the substance which is capable of solubilizing another substance also so we have to choose the solvent in such a way that all components of that mixture should be soluble otherwise separation having no meaning okay so these are some basic terms that are used in the chromatographic uh, broadly 
on the basis of mechanism for the separation uh, chromatographic classification we have seen there are number of ways are given but uh, just we have to understand the basic terms of chromatography so we have focused on adsorption partition chromatography even though they are having uh, ion exchange chromatographies uh, then uh, some uh, size exclusive chromatography then affinity chromatography so there are some uh, uh, types of chromatography which is based on the mechanism so first we'll see the adsorption chromatography it is a process of separation of component in a mixture which is introduced into the chromatographic system which is based on the difference in adsorption of component uh, in, uh, with respect to the stationary phase and mobile phase so how does uh, how much amount of sample is adsorbed on the stationary phase if it is having a uh, maximum uh, adsorption capacity with stationary phase then they are added on that and whatever the part which is not adsorbed on the stationary phase they can be moved along with the mobile phase so here uh, in this case generally we can use the liquid or gas phase as a mobile phase uh, that is adsorbed onto the surface of stationary solid phase so in that case we can use that is adsorption that is column chromatography thin layer chromatography gas solid chromatography these are some example already you have learned tlc as well as column chromatography in detail at ug as well as uh, pg first year then uh, partition chromatography that is the chromatography in which separation is based on only uh, mainly on the um, difference between the solubility of the sample component in stationary phase or there is a difference between the solubility of component uh, in the mobile phase and stationary phase so on the basis of their solubility pattern how much amount they are soluble so suppose we can say that uh, one of the substance is more soluble in mobile phase rather than stationary then which come faster those substances which are soluble in stationary phase or those substances which are soluble in mobile phase anyone substance soluble in mobile phase yes those substances which are soluble in mobile phase always come fast as compared to the substances which are soluble in stationary phase so on that basis the, the difference between the solubility that is called as partition chromatography and adsorption uh capacity of the uh, stationary phase of um, particular component then they can be separated on the basis of adsorption chromatography so on that basis uh, they can be uh, classified again here uh, mostly liquid liquid chromatography and gas liquid chromatography are involved in this case now we can see some different kinds of uh, chromatography uh, that most of the things that you have already learned uh, that is uh, first is paper chromatography so i have taken this uh, paper chromatography first because you have already learned this technique at fybsc whether it is correct paper chromatography technique he tumhi fybsc la practical la shiklela ahat he barobar ahe ka ho sir hmm kasha madhe shikla hai आठवते का कोणाला दोज हु आर लर्न ऍट बीएससी 1 पेपर क्रोमॅटोग्राफी सर सेपरेशन अँड आयडेंटिफिकेशन टेक्निक मध्ये प्रॅक्टिकल मध्ये होतो हां ज्यामध्ये आपण ऍसिडिक रॅडिकल आणि बेसिक रॅडिकल्स इनऑर्गॅनिक मधले हे आपण आयडेंटिफाय केले होते कलरच्या माध्यमातून बरोबर आहे म्हणजे हे हा जो पार्ट आहे हा आपण फर्स्ट इयरला प्रॅक्टिकलला घेतला पण त्याची थिअरी नव्हती आणि ऍटोनॉमस मध्ये आपण ते केलं की जे प्रॅक्टिकल आहे ते प्रॅक्टिकल आपण त्या मुलांना तिथं थिअरी दिली त्यामुळे क्रोमॅटोग्राफी आता हे पूर्वी टी वाय बी एस एल ला तुम्ही शिकलेला होता ज्याच्यामध्ये पेपर क्रोमॅटोग्राफी असेल टी एल सी असेल जी सी असेल त्यानंतर तुमचा आयन एक्सचेंज क्रोमॅटोग्राफी असेल कॉलम असेल तर हे जे काही होते त्यातले पेपर आणि टी एल सी हे आपण आता अंडर ग्रॅज्युएटला फर्स्ट अँड सेकंड इयरला टाकले त्याचं कारण म्हणजे पेपर क्रोमॅटोग्राफी ऑलरेडी आपण शिकतोय जिथे शिकतोय तिथं ती थिअरी दिल्यामुळे मुलांना आता ते खूप लवकर समजायला लागलं थोडासा तो बेनिफिट आपल्याला ऍटोनॉमस मध्ये घेता आला पेपर क्रोमॅटोग्राफी मध्ये आपण पाहिलेला आहे इट इज मोस्टली अनालिटिकल मेथड इज यूज टू सेपरेट द कलर केमिकल्स और सबस्टन्स एक्सपेशली पिगमेंट्स डाईज इवन दो द इनऑर्गॅनिक ऍसिडिक बेसिक रॅडिकल्स कॅन बी इझिली फाइंड आउट दोज हुंग कलर्ड अँड बायुजिंग द रुबॅनिक ऍसिड और बायुजिंग 
uh, spray gun, we can uh, find out the colored and when we can expose on ammonia, we have obtained mostly the uh, am amino acids uh, components are easily or mixture of amino acids can be separate out uh, by using this. And uh, that's why uh, it is a very um, uh, simple technique. In this case, we have observed now uh, the paper uh, that is used as a support that is having a cellulose mostly and on the basis of mobile phase uh, they can be adsorbed by the cellulose and those who are having less soluble uh, ad adsorption they can be move fast along with the uh, mobile phase so we can observe here this easily we can separate out the colored this is a mm, most pink color this is yellow color and this is uh, green to blue color so on the basis of that we have easily find out uh, which uh, component is present in this case so that is a paper chromatography everyone already handled this and even uh, we can carry out such kind of uh, analysis in uh, sugar sample as well as uh, proteins as well as in the uh, mostly in, uh, biological also we can use this paper chromatography then commonly used in the organic chemistry is the thin layer chromatography. So it is used to separate the non volatile mixture and it is performed on a sheet of glass or plastic. Even we can use aluminum foil. Mostly in the research institute, uh, they use aluminum foil rather than the glass and plastic. We have to prepare the slurry and then dip the glass plate in it and we have to um, clean one side and then we have to uh, take the sample on it. So that is a uh, tedious process uh, mostly in the research uh, aluminum foil is already there just we have to cut it in very one to two centimeter and we have to give a very fine capillary we have to use the sample and run in a very small beaker and then we have to uh, directly expose to the uv chamber then we can easily find out so that is a uh, advanced part of the thin layer chromatography and that uh, is uh, coated uh, with the thin layer of adsorbent mostly silica gel aluminum oxide and cellulose so uh, that is that sorbent material that is used in uh, TLC. I think uh, every uh, student at uh, undergraduate level, they have done this TLC. And also at uh, MSc1, mostly in the um, preparation, uh, you have already done the TLC because uh, in pre preparation, we have already keep that after each stage, you have to take the TLC. Then we have learned the column chromatography. So it is the method which is used to purify the individual chemical compounds <coughs> from the mixture of compounds. And again, in this case, we have to, this is the stationary phase and mobile phase we can pass from over here. This is suppose you can see the sample is loaded. And then on the basis of uh, solubility in the mobile phase and stationary phase, uh, they can be um, moved uh, here mostly here we can use a silica gel for column chromatography it is separate as compared to the silica gel which is used in thin air so both having a different porous size and on that basis we have to use uh, so very fine if the porous size of silica gel then it requires more time to separate out the sample but those who having the very close rf value on tlc then such kind of separation is generally carried out by using the silica gel which having more mesh value so they can be easily separate out and on the basis of uh, mobile phase solubility we have observed the separation and we can remove such kind of fluent and uh, collected so mostly for protein as well as the uh, in uh, mixture we have to separate because we know that organic reaction when we can carry it out we have to separation is carried out by using the column chromatography so this part is also very important at least one column every student should do in a, in his project work i have already mentioned uh, that for um, msc project which part is essential every student should do tlc when the reaction is carried out every student should do the column after completion of his final product then he or she will do the analysis that is characterization of sample by different technique that you have learned at PG level. So that's why this is a very, very important thing uh, because at 
final stage of this msc every technique you should know or at least you know as uh, our college having the cfc center which involve having different instrument that is uv visible uh, hvlc gc ir then uh, that instrument you have to even as is there in biotechnology uh, now the same is available with us so that is nothing but the instrumentation part is day by day is increases so you have to involve or you have to take part in that those are working in material then uh, there is also very good chance to take the same that is available uh, in our campus now you can see the ion exchange chromatography now in the ion exchange chromatography it is a process that can allows the separation of ions and polar molecules which is based on the affinity to the ion exchanger and it can be used almost any kind of charged molecules that having large proteins small nucleotides amino acids and uh, the solution to be injected is called sample and they can be separated are uh, analyzed i think uh, ion exchange chromatography you have already done at tybs level so am i correct or yes sir no. yeah so uh, cation exchange or anion exchange chromatography i think uh, molecular sieves you have used uh, in uh, uh, inorganic chemistry right yes sir so ha huh, so that part you have already learned that is ion exchange and uh, but uh, after that no, no one is used that ion exchange chromatography at msc level so there should be a experiment in which uh, such kind of involvement uh, of technique is there that is column chromatography ion exchange chromatography then and then only uh, student having the ability to uh, do the things so this is the negatively charged proteins positively charged proteins are there and these having the different resins are there so they are been loaded and then on the basis of whether there is cation exchange or anion exchange takes place they can be uh, separated out suppose we can say we can observe positively charged uh, gel beds are there so they can be um, absorb this uh, or positive uh, negative are absorbed positive are going downward so they can be easily separated out and then whatever there are um, negatively charged proteins are there then by using uh, polarity we can separate out that one so in this way uh, by using ion exchange chromatography we can carry out the separation the next commonly used uh, chromatographic technique is size exclusive chromatography mostly gel chromatography is there so it is a chromatographic method in which the molecules in a solution are separated by their size so on the basis of size we have to separate out so that is called as size exclusive chromatography and in some cases we can easily find out the molecular weight also so it is as mostly useful for the large molecular macromolecular complex so here uh, this is a chromatographic column and uh, through which we have to pass this proteins so on the basis of their size they can be trapped over here and whatever uh, the size is there other than that they can be removed so they cannot be trapped so on the basis of size we can separate out the uh, mixture and that is called as size exclusive chromatography i think this is already you have learned the design exchange size exclusive now uh, affinity chromatography it is a method of separating biomolecules or biochemical compound mixture and which having a high uh, affinity with the stationary phase so those who have very high affinity or interaction with stationary phase then they can be uh, form a bond that is affinity and those who have not they will come along with the solvent system or mobile phase so here mostly the antigen antibody enzyme substrates or receptors they can be used in this case so if you observe um, this is the column which having the components complex proteins mixture some salts are also there then we have to wash with uh, that process then if you observe this having affinity suppose we can say that this is the target proteins they having affinity with this affinity resins so only that target proteins can be attached to this resin while the rest of things have been separate out or they can be moved along with mobile phase and that's why we can observe they can be separated out and then uh, by using automatic with um, system we can remove that uh, attached target proteins 
and they can be separated out. And that's why this is the affinity chromatographic technique that can be used mostly for the protein uh, separation of uh, mixture that having enzymes, substrate, receptor, antibodies, ligands. So such kind of uh, components are present along with target protein. So we can easily separate out uh, protein from rest of the components. So that is called as affinity chromatography. Then uh, gas chromatography. I think you have already learned this. Uh, at, uh, huh. So it is a process of separating component from the given uh, crude drugs by using a gases mobile phase. So in this case, mostly sample is uh, vaporized and injected on the uh, head of the chromatographic column. And then uh, sample is transported through the column. Uh, this is injected port this is gas flow these are the gases mostly we can use the um, so uh, the column itself contain liquid stationary phase which is absorbed on the surface of inner solid solid material so mostly uh, it involves solid gas chromatography and solid liquid chromatography so in solid uh, or gas solid chromatography here the mobile phase is gaseous while the stationary phase is solid so mostly useful for low molecular weight separation and here we can use uh, the inert carrier gas is uh, nitrogen along with that uh, some part we can use helium hydrogen and oxygen is also there so there are three uh, gases are there and they can be passed over here then gas liquid chromatography that is mobile phase is again here is gas while the stationary phase is liquid that written on the surface of the inert solid material which is added on the inner side of the column. So here again, uh, Owen is there, very high temperature is there, and through which uh, this column, having a different kind of shapes are available, mostly in this, they are in circular. Then this is the injected port, so we have to inject the sample by syringe to in this injector port. This is carrier gas, and then through this column, we can pass through this and to go to the detector. And here, uh, the instrumentation control is carried out by using the uh, data analysis system and on computer we can observe that peak so again this is very useful even though we have to monitor the reaction by using simple gas chromatography so for this we have to inject the whatever the substrate we can use or if you have a standard a final product with you highly purify then you have to inject that one and then you have to monitor the reaction instead of tlc mostly uh, in industry they can be used uh, such kind of technique for monitoring the reaction then high performance liquid chromatography. Also, this instrument is available in CFC. It is a very powerful tool in analysis, mostly in the uh, biomolecules, proteins, or in the um, each and every quality control department in industry as well as research. High performance liquid chromatography is always there. Without uh, this, uh, we cannot carry out the uh, completion of uh, analysis part. So it is a high speed compared to the traditional column chromatography because of using the pump mobile phase. So HPLC is a type of liquid chromatography where the sample is forced to the column and that is packed with a stationary phase. Uh, in that case, we're having a particular uh, spherical shape, porous uh, monolithic layer is there and it having a membrane by a liquid of mobile phase which is very high. So this is the solvent mobile phase. In the reservoir, mostly we can use the bottle directly, even though we can represent over here, but actually we used bottles directly of a particular polarity. And then you can pass through this. And by using this pump, you have to maintain this pressure and they can be passed through this delivery system to the HPLC column. And here is injector. Again, a uh, automatic sampler is there. We have to just change the mode and inject the sample by using syringe and then uh, again, by using the polarity, we can separate out this and we have to collect detector is there and we have to collect the event over here. And again, by on the on that basis in the detector, which is attached directly to the computer data system. So we can observe the uh, spectrum uh, we can get here. That is chromatogram easily. So this is the uh, HPLC. So I think HPLC also uh, you know at uh, undergraduate level we have observed the number of steps that are in again involved on the basis of column and whether uh, it involved 
uh, phase uh, chromatography uh, stationary phase is polar so the more polar solids being separated will uh, on the basis of adhering of uh, stationary phase and when the solvent or uh, solvent system that is gradient of solvents when they can pass through the column the less polar component will evaporate faster than the more polar one so because here the stationary phase is commonly used as polar so normal phase generally this column having polar system and that's why uh, non polar components uh, that is nothing but the mobile phase which is non polar is coming fast and that's why the less polar component can be eluted first so it is exactly opposite to the column chromatography in column chromatography that we have carried out manually then always the polar components come first and then non polar so in this case uh, this is a normal phase chromatography so components can be uh, collected uh, separately and uh, that can be achieved by increasing the polarity slowly we can remove the each and every sample so this is a normal phase chromatography always the mcq type question is asked on this uh, regarding the which uh, mobile phase is uh, used in the uh, normal phase chromatography technique or separation so that is very important part that we have to uh, focus on that so mostly in hplc we have to use such kind of uh, part now Uh, in reverse phase chromatography what will happen the polarity has been changed which is exactly opposite to the normal one so where normal phase so here we can use the non polar mobile phase system uh, solvent and polar solvent uh, so now the uh, we have to change or reverse the way to the first one now the non polar is the stationary phase and uh, polar system is a mobile phase and in this case now what will happen the samples which are polar they can be easily or they can be come fast and they can be separate out mostly methanol uh, system is used so that can be easily separate out on that per percentage of the along with system that is aqueous system so mostly we can use high polarity methanol and water system mm, that can be useful over here to separate out the components now the next part that is the supercritical uh, fluid chromatography that we will see in detail uh, but what is the difference uh, that mostly for uh, gc and uh, hplc they having certain limitations and that can be overcome by using the supercritical fluid chromatography so it is a normal uh, phase chromatography that is used for the analysis and purification of low moderate molecular weight and thermally labile molecules so it can be used to separation of chiral compounds also and mostly it is similar to the uh, high performance liquid chromatography almost all technique is similar however uh, super uh, critical fluid chromatography uh, it is used mobile phase is used as a super critical that is nothing but we can use a, a liquid and solid instead of that we can use the mobile phase co2 and uh, therefore the entire chromatography uh, system is called as super critical fluid chromatography so that we will see in detail actually the so in the type of different parts we have to just focus on that uh, the super critical phase uh, represent the state in which the liquid and gas properties have been covered uh, and super critical fluid chromatography it is called as convergence chromatography if you observed uh, the diagram which is almost similar to that of paper, uh, hplc so in short that only carrier gas here we can use the uh, co2 cylinder co2 pump is there thermostat and we have to pass over here and this is the system of mobile phase solvent pump and they can be passed through over here these are the column and uh, we can by using a back pressure we have to control the pressure and we have to collect the fragments so that technique is similar to hplc only change here we can use co2 so substance we know uh, for this purpose we must focus on the what is meant by supercritical fluid what is meant by critical temperature what is meant by critical pressure and uh, at low viscosity how the it can be very useful and where we can apply mostly this apply to the uh, natural that is extraction of liquid reaction and they can be easily separation for chiral compound this is very very important part 
uh, by using supercritical fluid chromatography, we can separate out the chiral compounds. And analysis of polymer is also carried out by using the supercritical fluid chromatography. And that's why in this topic, we have to focus on this in detail. What is by critical pressure and critical temperature uh, that we have to focus on this. So this is the very important part uh, that uh, we have to explain in detail in this topic. So up till now, we have observed the different types of uh, chromatographic technique that you have learned or you know at this stage. So um, from uh, next lecture, mostly we can start with the uh, what is meant by critical temperature and what is meant by critical pressure. So what is meant by critical temperature? Anyone know the definition? So uh, always any phase having its critical point that is solid as well as liquid. And this is the supercritical fluid that is the temperature or pressure. So mostly um, we have to use such a supercritical fluid point and then the separation is carried out by using this CO2 uh, which used as a mobile phase. So uh, that we have to explain in detail on next lecture. So um, I think we will stop over here and uh, from next lecture we can see the why we can use supercritical fluid technique and then we can uh, start actually uh, that introduction part we will start on the next lecture so um, if you observe um, again uh, two three students uh, are absent or four students but they should mention the why they are absent in a, a lecture i think akash is uh, having a some health issue uh, also with his family so i already discussed with him yesterday so along with that uh, those who are absent they should mention why uh, they are absent so everyone having problem but they should mention on whatsapp group so um, i think as per new schedule that we have to uh, stop the lecture at 9.45 but uh, you should uh, open your um, face so um, that video so we will discuss within one minute whether any kind of difficulty you have faced um, or whatever the process is going on because this system we have to adapt and maybe the exam is on a similar mode so you must uh, going through the whatever the material i have sent to you for uh, first topic, you have to take the print of all whole things. Okay, so that is very uh, essential. So mm, the second lecture probably uh, we will take. I have to ask. I think mm, maybe uh, record sir or Kadam mm, sir will take. I think uh, sound madam have done or completed the syllabus. Just I will check who will take the lecture or uh, those uh, if not coming, then I will ask. Yes, Hello, sir. I, I think, ha, huh. okay. Uh, Kokata sir is already there. So um, Kokata sir will take the lecture. So I will just leave. So sir will continue the lecture and um, he will finish at 10.30. So those who are joined to uh, Mahindra Pride activity, they will join before time. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Just start your cam, sir. Start your cam. Camera salo kara. Good morning, student. Take so much time to just click on the cam. The 
कैमरा शुरू करा जगताप चवान नीलम पवार साजिद ऐसा जी जो जलने अजुन अंदर चवान सर का डेटा संपल बंद कर फश्न विचार तो उत्तर दया चवान सर का जीसी क्रोमेटोग्राफिकल फ्लूड क्रोमेटोग्राफी ओके एक्सपीरियंस कितने आते हैं डिटेल्स में दे नहीं सर नो सर नो सर ये तो सिलेबस में बाकी तो नहीं कहाये थे पर कुरान डबा पे सालों तमन में विचार ला ठीक है आप लोग मरे सर ये स्पेल्स नहीं थे नहीं ना हाँ ठीक है आप लोग जब मरे पक्के का इंट्रोडक्शन है जस्ट ऐसा नहीं है अन्य वर्किंग आसल अन्य बर आता माध्यम लेक्चर शिफ्ट जा ले लाए जे पहले गुरुवारी होता था तो आता सोमवारी होना रहे ओके आह ये टाइम ला नौ पंचेस को वह दस टाइम ला चला था टाइम टेबल में भी चेंज है ओके आह देन आह वी स्टार्ट सिंस वी हैव ओनली फोर्टी फाइव मिनट सो आई डोंट वांट टू वेस्ट टू मच टाइम ऑन द अदर थिंग्स Share the screen. Okay. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Uh, so as you know, uh, in last lecture we have talked, we have, uh, we were talking about the new technique uh, that is the HPLC and. NMR. HPLC stand for the high performance liquid chromatography, and NMR, you know everyone, what is by NMR. So this is the new technique, uh, which has a great application in the pharma biological uh, biological activities, then uh, analysis of the complex mixture. So it is a very important technique for the analyst chemist. Uh, then we have seen about the uh, history and introduction. Uh, it started from the 1970. And then uh, just last 15 years back, it got the uh, variety of applications, so it becomes popular in just within last 15 minutes, 15 years. So uh, you can use this technique at various uh, magnetic field and for the various compound like hydrogen, C13, 2 hydrogen, 19 fluorine, 31 phosphorus. Okay. Uh, this is the history. Uh, these are the two scientists, uh, Watnabe and Nikki. Uh, first time demonstrate the, this technique, LCNMR, in 1970. Uh, then uh, this technique is uh, modified by different scientists at different years, and uh, it got uh, very useful applications. So this is the history of both HPLC, NMR, and the LCNMR. So you can. Uh, See the tabular form. Uh, this is the written, uh, history in the written form. Okay. Uh, this is the principle of NMR. So we take one sheet like that. I am going to ask the first guest now. I am going to ask. Is there video on that? So this is the HPLC technique. Uh, Nehmi likes to say that chromatography is a little different. So this technique is similar. Some of the changes are similar. Just some changes are not there. Okay. So absorption, partition, these two words are chromatography. But the hamkas enters. Because all the chromatography technique is based on the absorption and partition. So, if you have a compound that is solid phase where absorption will and there is a partition will. So, these are the two terms. Always remember whenever we talk about the chromatography. Uh, here, uh, I am going to play uh, that video. Uh, we have to see the working of the HPLC. So, my fighters will. Okay. So this is the video from the this class, Pushpendra. Uh, 
आवाज मी देत नाही कारण मी बोलणार आहे ओके वी हॅव टू सी अबाउट द इन्स्टॉलेशन अँड वर्किंग ओके याच्यामध्ये वर्किंग कसं होतं त्यात पार्ट कुठले कुठले आहेत ते बघूया एकदा परत ओके सो आल ऑल रिमेंबर वी नीड एस लिक्विड ॲज अ मोबाईल फेज सो ही दिस इज कॉल्ड द सॉल्वन रिझर्व याच्यामध्ये आपण लिक्विड ठेवणार आहे जे कॉलममधनं पास होणार आहे आता हे लिक्विड सिस्टीममध्ये घेण्यासाठी त्यासाठी आपल्याला पंप लागतो सो वी नीड ए वॅक्युम पंप सो दिस वॅक्युम पंप विल टेक दिस लिक्विड फ्रॉम द रिझर्वर अँड विल पास द सिस्टी ओके हिअर सॉल्वन मिक्सिंग वाल्लू म्हणजे काय होतं जे दोन असेल किंवा तीन लिक्विड असतील ते सॉल्वन तिथे येणार आणि या ठिकाणी मिक्स होणार सो दिस इज द थर्ड स्टेप आफ्टर मिक्सिंग इट विल पास थ्रू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट विच इज द कॉलम एल सी कॉलम मग तो पॅक कॉलम असेल किंवा कॅपिलरी कॉलम कॅपिलरी कॉलम असेल इट्स डिपेंड ऑन द युअर सॅम्पल विच सॅम्पल यू आर गोईंग टू अनलाइज ओके देन दिस पार्ट इज द सॅम्पल इंजेक्टर म्हणजे आपलं जे सॅम्पल असणार अनालिसिस करणार आहे सो यू हॅव टू इंजेक्ट सॅम्पल ॲट दिस पॉइंट ओके देन सॉरी दिस इज द प्री कॉलम ऑफ गार्ड कॉलम देन यू इंजेक्ट द कॉलम सॅम्पल हिअर देन सॅम्पल अलॉंग विथ द सॉल्वंट विल पास थ्रू दिस मेन कॉलम अनालिटिकल कॉलम जो आपलं सेपरेशन होणार आहे सॅम्पल कंपोनंटचं सो दिस इज द कॉलम वेअर सेपरेशन विल टेक प्लेस आफ्टर सेपरेशन दिस इज द डिटेक्टर पार्ट सो दिस विल डिटेक्ट ऑल द कॉम्पोनंट and it will record so you can see that solvent is moving uh, which is uh, packed, uh, taken by the vacuum now here degassing there is some the liquid made kutle gases astil dissolve zalele oxygen asel kiwa co2 gases asel kon dusra kutle gas asel so it will take by the vacuum so only pure liquid will pass through the system so this is called degasser process now here uh, both the liquid comes from reservoir and here mixing is going on okay so after mixing it will pass through this and this mixing uh, we can give the uh, value so you can mi- uh, mix the in different proportion jo tumhala 10 15 gets asel kiwa 15 20 proportion gets asel you can do this now this is the guard column or pre column which take the uh, insoluble particle present in the solvent so pure solvent will pass through this system now injector your sample injection will take this and here it will pass through so this is the working of the hvlc simple ahe jo tumha prashna vicharla write down the working of the hvlc so you have to tell about this the parameter unit which are the unit present and you have to write down the working so you have to talk about the solvent which type of solvent either polar or non polar then role of the vacuum pump then this mixing and then injector part and the column here you can see that in column uh, different uh, solute are get separated by the uh, partition principle in the column and here you can see that after partition separation this detector will detect and it will give the in- output on the recorder so you will have a display where you can see that different peaks are coming on the display the so number of peak a uh, number of peaks equal to the number of component present in the mixture so here three components are present in the starting mixture so you can use this hvlc for the analysis of sample okay so you always remember if uh, question is there uh, write down the uh, working uh, instrumentation and working of the hvlc then you have to write down and if you ask about the write down the instrumentation of the elc in nmr then you have to draw this diagram and tacha badal tumhala lehava lagel so what parts or what units are present in the elc and nmr so first part is the elc unit yacha madhe ata apun jase baghitle elc unit madhe kay kay aste te sanga lagel auto sampler which is the sample injection hote the elc pump column and detector here you can use different types of detectors like a uh, non nmr detector for example uv uh, dad ec refract index or radioactive the details the gajchi garaj nahi apun je kay asa khas hvlc sathi nahi ha point and hybrid technique baktoy apun 
So main focus will be on this part. Uh, you'll see NMR interface, and uh, this will be called direct line and indirect. These are the two types, okay, uh, used for the LC and NMR, and this is the NMR init. details this NMR technique is common. Every analytical chemist how to use the NMR. So I am uh, I will take more details about the NMR unit. Okay. Uh, this is the diagramic representation of the LC NMR. Okay. Uh, this uh, left part is about the HPLC. This is the solvent reservoir pump. Okay. Then uh, this is the uh, uh, sample will pass through this part and then here is the column where separation will take place and that uh, sample will be detected by the detector and then next same sample will pass through the interface okay so this is the interface used for the lc and nmr okay the two types always remember lc nmr one is the direct and second is the indirect this is the type of indirect interface okay uh, now after interface this will pass the sample uh, the sample will pass through the this nmr unit this is the total nmr unit and this is the main unit of the nmr this is called as the nmr probe p r o b e okay here sample will be analyzed and data will be collected and it will be displayed on the your screen so this is about the hplc NMR. Either you can inject sample by auto sampling or manually. So that means inject through shakta kiwa auto sampler uh And the amount of sample you are going to inject in the uh, system is 0.1 to 100 ml volume. Okay. And pressure you have to maintain about 4000 psi then solvent so you have to talk about the solvent which type of solvent you are going to use that's the point so always remember in hplc uh, you are going to use uh, both polar and non-polar liquid component okay uh, hplc in the solvent put lever for the solvent so to polar and non-polar okay the intro general might as the gay hair with the matter when the legacy puts a pressure corner give me the example of polar liquid and non polar liquid my take a tomorrow but the polar liquid and non polar liquid offer that you don't have the basic dollar but the chamber example my doesn't that is the great part when you face the interview can you give me the example of polar liquid and non-polar liquid? Sir, hexane, non-polar. Uh, kutla? And acetone. Hexane. Hexane, okay. And acetone. And the other? Water is polar, sir. Water is polar, okay. Azur? Barpura solvents, compound is the stuff? Ethanol. Okay, it's an all. Yeah. So, Nimila said, Pustaka jelly and let the which are the which to shut the end of it. But told us the details my job as well. This is the examples I need. Polar liquid and non polar person to my time. But that's a example of the my pile. So, polar liquid, for example, ethanol, water, non polar for NXN, CCL4, carbon tetrachloride. So, we can use this type of liquid or solvent for the HPLC as a mobile page okay uh, then you have to talk about the pump system what is the role of pump it just only take the sample from the solvent reservoir and pass through the system okay the next part is the column this is GC the column this is the okay uh, then detector uh, it's a total seven part I detect seven detector wapper the letter upon uh, ultraviolet visible light detector refract index detector then infrared IR detector. So this type of detector we can use uh, one is new it's called the DAD 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 diode array detector. So this type of detector uh, you can uh, use for the HPLC 
and last part is a simple recorder which will record all your sample and it will give the spectra which uh, from which you can uh, get the idea about the mixture okay so this is another image simple image of the hpsc system okay now next part is very important as uh, hypernetic technique we one must know about the coupling between the two technique the part which couple the two technique is called the interface okay so in lc nmr we have two way uh, we can connect this two technique so one is the direct coupling second is the indirect coupling okay so as name suggest direct coupling means so lc or hplc will directly connect to the nmr and mostly in this case we don't need any interface okay calibrated interface apna garaj lagat nahi so just to some modification uh, walls mon to apan tela manje walls manje asta through way three way walls asta tumhara image madhe desel evda connect kele ki it will work as a direct coupling okay so in direct coupling which includes direct flow of lc effluent uh, hplc madhe je solvent bahar janar hai liquid okay directly pass with nmr flow side madhe okay and you can record the spectra continuously so this is the direct flow uh, under this direct coupling there are two types either you can use post column splitter or wall switching interface interface आपण हे बघणार आहे वॉल स्विचिंग इंटरफेस ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट द डायरेक्ट कपलिंग सो इन डायरेक्ट कपलिंग म्हणजे काय असेल देयर विल बी इंटरफेस बिटवीन द एलसी एंड एनएमआर सो इन इन डायरेक्ट कपलिंग देयर इज अ स्टोरेज लूप ओके सो स्टोरेज लूप म्हणजे काय की ज्या ठिकाणी ज्यावेस आपण एचपीएलसी मध्ये पार्टिशन होतं मिक्सर मधले कंपोनेंट सेपरेट होतात ते कंपोनेंट वेगवेगळ्या पार्ट मध्ये स्टोर केलं जातं ओके दैट इज कॉल्ड स्टोरेज लूप कंटिन्यूअस पास होत नाही सॅम्पल जसं एच पी एल सिग्नल आलं की पास केलं असं होत नाही याच्यामध्ये सो इन दिस केस सॅम्पल ऑर कॉम्पोनंट इज सेपरेटेड इन द डिफरंट लूप इट इज कॉल्ड स्टोरेज लूप अँड देन दिस सॅम्पल इज पास आफ्टर वन बाय वन एका मागे एक हे सॅम्पल पास केलं जातं ओके सो दिस इज कॉल्ड इनडायरेक्ट कपली अँड दिस टेक्निक कॅन बी डन बाय द सॉलिड फेज एक्स्ट्रॅक्शन मेथड ओके आपण बघणारच आहे हॉट इज मीन बाय सॉलिड फेज एक्स्ट्रॅक्शन ओके Uh, here image of the direct coupling ekda vyavasthit bagun gya kutle kutle parts ahe khali dilela ahe tyacha uh, what is mean by 1 what is mean by 3 4 ekda vachun gya me just explain karel tumhala lagat samjel just take a 15 second to read this slide ओके घेतलं व्यवस्थित बघितलं डायग्राम खालचे पॉइंट वाचले पाच म्हणजे काय सहा म्हणजे काय ओके ह्याच्यामध्ये दोन बॉक्स आहे वरचा बॉक्स आणि दुसरा खाली डाऊन ला आहे एक नंबर म्हणजे एच पी एल सी युनिट आहे ओके सो दिस होल इज द एच पी एल सी युनिट दिस पार्ट इज अबाउट द एन एम आर युनिट ओके अँड दिस इज कॉल्ड वॉल ठीक आहे ह्या वॉलला आपण इंटरफेस म्हणणार आहे डायरेक्ट कपलिंग मध्ये हे वॉल्स वापरतात ओके सो वन इज द एच पी एल सी सेकंड इज द एन एम आर एन एम आर चा टाईप दिलेला कुठल्या कंपनीचा आहे तो सांगितलेला आहे जिओल एफ एक्स सिक्स्टी आहे ओके थ्री इज द कॉलम दिस इज द एच पी एल सी कॉलम ओके सो सॅम्पल विल बी सेपरेटेड इन टू डिफरंट कॉम्पोनंट इन दिस पार्ट फोर इज द डिटेक्टर या केस मध्ये डाय इलेक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टंट डिटेक्टर वापरलेला आहे सो दिस इज द डिटेक्टर नेक्स्ट इज द फिफ्थ इज द इंटरफेस इट इज थ्री वे वॉल फर्स्ट थ्री वे म्हणजे काय त्याला तीन ही असतात इनलेट तीन वॉल्स असतात पहिलं म्हणजे एक ही करून येणार सॅम्पल ओके सो वन सॅम्पल इज कम्स हिअर सो दिस सॅम्पल कॅन बी पास आयदर दिस साईड और दिस साईड ठीक आहे सो त्याच्यात तीन हे असतात एंट्री त्यामुळे ह्याला आपण काय म्हणतो थ्री वे वॉल ओके सिक्स इज द अनदर थ्री वे वॉल ओके सो दिस इज द अनदर थ्री वे वॉल 
and seven is the injection port for the resolution. Okay. And it's at a drain. Which is the sample analysis that like you want to know what lay sample gala no po. So to me sample directly could have buyer call shakta. Waste moon to talk with you shakta. So it is drain part. Okay, now let's see the working. At the expense of working to my mahita zahe, you have taken a sample sir, separation wheel, regular compounds with it, detect the hotel, and this sample leggy pass with it. Okay. At the tomala hita kahi control na ye. This is a sample ala. You cannot sample pass karate. You cannot have any control over here. Okay. So let's say first separation comes here. If you want to analyze, then you have to pass this sample towards this side. And if you don't want to analyze this sample, then you can take it out by this way. So it is called three-way wall. But Javas Tomala what that applies sample continuously at Rana Rabba, one by one a sample in Rana Rai. Without any stop. But Tomala what that his sample gave away. I had time like it. Java samples a concentration just as it. Okay, so what is the total concentration? Timmy as it. Total parts are it as a concentration water. And Java said the just will not the total concentration. Timmy would say. But over it. After the sample were in an array. It's still seven. Take I egg them survey and are not yet. But over. So what is the total and are the concentration water than at one point it will have high concentration. Then its concentration starts slowly, slowly decreasing. But Java is the sample, sir. Some the mixture made thin component. I, by the component, all the separations are the first. Tomorrow, the detector made this one. Okay, by the sample, all the the concentration just all the. So when you are confirm that concentration is enough to pass in the NMR system, then just switch this wall. That's the point. He had this like a right, sir. So that sample will pass into the here with that uh, NMR unit. Okay. So that sample will pass here. Now this is a six uh, is this another three wall system. So sample will pass in this system. Now seven is the injection port for the resolution. At the Malasanga, NMR with the solvent put lava porto as a standard. PMS. PMS. Okay. Azundusra. Burpur solvent side. CCL4. CCL4? Okay. Azul. I use hmm. Azul. Donut Lakshada. Benzene. Benzene. As it is, benzene used the back. थोड़ा सा तुमची आइडिया बेसिक के में है नेमर मधे जावे सापुन टीमेस पेक्चर दूसरे सैंपल वापर दस तो जावे जब फॉर एग्जांपल हेक्स बेंजीन है बेंजीन से मालूम है फॉर्मूला है C6H6 ओके तो क्या ने वो यूज बेंजीन एस इट इज इन नेमर ऑपरेशन तो क्या बिकॉज़ नेमर इज टेक्निक फॉर द Hydrogen interpretation. Whatever. Must the benzene with the sign hydrogen as a standard? We can't. Because it will interfere with the, your sample. So if you want to ben use benzene, then you have to replace hydrogen by the deuterium atom. Okay. Manje C6 D6. D manje atom hai hydrogen as isomer. Okay, isotope might have not the hydrogen, hydrogen, deuterium, and it deuterium. So when you uh, replace hydrogen or benzene by de uh, deuterium, then it can act as a solvent. So you have to pass this solvent through this side, seven. So this is the three wall. The so sample will pass, then pass the solvent. So here solvent and your standard standard solvent will pass into the NMR, and here analysis will be done in this part. And after that, that sample will be our solution will be drain out. Take carbon ganetil. Okay. Our first portion is done. Then second sample, two such a mahagat leke zee toh component. Ek amishram mujhe three component hai. First is done, second is done. Okay. So 
सेकंड लगे लगे अपने पास कराव लगे लगे एनालिस लगे सेकंड तीसरा तीसरा लगे हा दिशे अपने वर्किंग दिया लगे दिस टेक्निक हेज सम लिटिल प्रॉब्लम वेन सेपरेशन ऑफ द कॉम्पोन कॉम्पोन इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट सेपरेशन खूब कमी एक मगेस थोड़स अपने जास्त का लगती थोड़स मॉडिफिकेशन कर सेपरेशन का टाइम अपने वाढ़वा लगत ठीक है सो एनालिटिकल केमिस्ट्री च काम दिस इज दटोमेटेड है तुम्हें सैम्पल इंजेक्ट के लिए हो रहा है ज्यादा जर दोन कॉम्पोनट आते मिक्सर मे सेपरेशन टाइम जर कमी तो अपल डोक वाव लगे अपने कामीटर चेंजेस कराव लगते ठीक है मैं फ्लो आल क्या अपन सॉलव रेट आल ठीक है हा गोषी अपन जस जेसी मध्य बढ़ी वे लगते ठीक है सो दिस डायरेक्ट कपलिंग हेज सम लिटिल प्रॉब्लम प्रॉब्लम नहीं सम लिटिल प्रॉब्लम ओके थोड़स है जे अपन काम करू शो बट दिस इज द प्रॉब्लम विथ दिस डायरेक्ट कपले ओके नाउ वील गो टू सी नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज द इनडायरेक्ट कपलिंग आता इनडायरेक्ट कपलिंग मे तुम लक्ष दल जर आप इनडायरेक्ट कपलिंग वाले आप स्टोरेज लूप वो ओके वर्किंग सेम रह है का ही चेंजेस ना फे अपन जे सैम्पल कि मिक्सर मधल कॉम्पोनट है तो स्टोर करना है वॉल सैम्पल होल्डर मे ओके डायरेक्ट हाथिका ये मैं कॉलम है हेच्छे सेपरेशन जाए बरबर एक पार्ट डिटेक्टर जाए दुसरा पार्ट लगी तुम्हारे एन एम आर कहना है तुम्हारा महत्व है हेजन तीन कॉम्पोनट है एक मिक्सर मध्य तीन कॉम्पोन है पहला कॉम्पोन आला सो यू कैन स्टोर इन टू द दिस फर्स्ट वॉल ओके ज्यास तुम्हारा लक्ष्य दे कि पहला मिक्सर कंप्लीट बाहर आएस तुम्हें हा वॉल बंद करू शता ठीक है देन सेकेंड कॉम्पोनट वील कम हियर सो यू कैन स्टोर इन टू द सेकेंड कॉलम लाइक दैट थ्री और फोर इज डिपेंड ऑन द सैम्पल कि तुम्हें ये करू शता ठीक है आता ज्यास समझा तुम्हारे दोन कॉम्पाउंड मदल सेपरेशन कमी आल तरी तुम्हें यठिका सेपरेशन करू शता ठीक है ज्यास तुम्हारा वाटते अपने पैल कॉम्पाउंड लिक्विड जास्त प्रमाण आए तो हेमें स्टोर कर हा वॉल बंद कराए सो दैट लिक्विड विल मूव इन टू द सेकेंड कॉलम सो दिस वे यू कैन सेपरेट और यू कैन स्टोर ईच कॉम्पोनट इन टू द डिफरंट स्टोरेज लूप दिस इज कॉल्ड द स्टोरेज लूप हे स्टोरेज लूप कसत है तो इमेजेस है बार सो दीज आर द स्टोरेज लूप इट इट इज कॉल्ड द लूप कैसेट मन तो अपन हालां हे थर्टी सिक्स सैम्पल लूप्स है तुम्हें जवरपास थर्टी सिक्स वेगवेगे कॉम्पोनट स्टोर करू शता ओके मग दाखिल है इमेज वर्टिकल इमेज तो रिमेम्बर दिस इमेज इट इज कॉल्ड लूप कैसेट ओके ज्यास तुम ये अल स्टोर सर्व कॉम्पोनट आए कि जर चालू आल तो तुम्हें तुम्हारा जे कॉम्पोन पाजे कुछ सैम्पल जो तुम्हारा एनालिस कराएं तो तुम्हें इजीली करू शता सो जस्ट पास दिस सैम्पल इन टू द एनिमा तथा तेज एनालिस हो तुम्हारा इतना स्पेक्ट्रा मिले ओके एनालिस सैम्पल आप ड्रेन आउट करू शो वॉश आउट करू शो ओके सो दिस इज द डिफरस बिट्वीन डायरेक्ट कपलिंग एंड इनडायरेक्ट कपलिंग हा मेजर पार्ट है ये प्रश्न यू शको तो रिमेम्बर What is meant by indirect coupling and direct coupling? And check it out. Indirect coupling was for us an interesting point. What to have? That means indirect coupling was question. All that you check it. Then direct coupling. What is it? Simple. All sample. Ki H plus one. No. Ki N number. What is part wise? Okay. But H number. What is it? For us. Upon storage loop. I have store. Can you check? So, after this sample, by the upon analysis, can you can you check? Okay. So indirect coupling has a great advantage over the Direct coupling, and this is called the interface. Okay. Uh, now we are going to see about the instrument part of uh, NMR and its working. So NMR, you have to know what is the instrument part, what is the part, and the working. What is the part? 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 What is the
सांगा एनएमआर मध्ये कुठले कुठले इंस्ट्रुमेंट पार्ट आहे थोडस डोक्याला हे द्या ऑपोजिट मॅग्नेटिक पोल्स ओके मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड आहे पहिला अजून अजून काय काय आठवतं इमेज आठवते का बघावर ऑलवेज रिमेंबर पहिला सॅम्पल होल्डर ओके गुड सॅम्पल होल्डर तुम्हाला एक आयडिया सांगतो कुठले स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी करताना जर कोणी विचारलं इन्स्ट्रुमेंट पार्ट कुठला आहे तर पहिलं तुम्हाला लक्ष द्यायला पाहिजे की डिटेक्टर हा तर सगळ्यांमध्ये असणार आहे बरोबर तर पहिलं उत्तर लगेच आलं पाहिजे डिटेक्टर इम्प्रेशन तुमचं चांगलं पडेल ना हो ओके यु नोज अबाउट द पार्ट मग बाकीचे सांगत जायचं ठीक आहे तो हा टेल मी अबाउट द डिफरंट इन्स्ट्रुमेंट पार्ट इन एन एम आर फॉइज स्विफ्ट जनरेटर ओके गुड अजून डिटेक्टर झाला स्विफ्ट जनरेटर झाला मॅग्नेटिक मॅग्नेट झालं अजून सॅम्पल होल्डर कॉईल 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 असते तर कॉईल काय म्हणतो आपण बोल रेडिओ फ्रिक्वेन्सी ट्रान्समिटर आणि रिसिव्हर पण असतो सगळ्यात तुमच्या समोर आहे स्लाइड तरी तुमच्या लक्षात येईन आहे अमोन गायज उत्तर तुमच्या समोर आहे तरी तुम्ही एवढा टाइम लावताय ओके सो रिमेंबर दिस स्लाइड इंडिकेट द डिफरंट इन्स्ट्रुमेंट पार्ट विच आर प्रेझेंट इन द एन एम आर युनिट वी नीड मॅग्नेट स्ट्रॉंग मॅग्नेट अँड दिस मॅग्नेट इज टू सेपरेट द न्युक्लियर स्पिन एनर्जी स्टेट ओके तुम्हाला माहित आहे प्लस अँड मायनस स्पिन असते प्रत्येक इलेक्ट्रॉनला त्याच्यात चेंज करण्यासाठी आपण मॅग्नेटिक वापरतो सेकंड पार्ट इज टू आर एफ चॅनल्स रेडिओ फ्रिक्वेन्सी चॅनल्स म्हणतो आपण जे कॉईल असतात वन फॉर द फील्ड फ्रिक्वेन्सी स्टॅबिलायझेशन अँड वन टू सप्लाय आर एफ रेडिएटिंग एनर्जी ओके देन दिस इज द मेन पार्ट सॅम्पल क्रॉप ओके सॅम्पल क्रॉप म्हणजे काय जिथे सॅम्पल आपण ठेवतो तो एरिया सॅम्पल क्रॉप so sample probe containing coils for coupling the sample with the rf field okay it consists of sample holder rf oscillator sieve generator and rf receiver so these are the parts which are present in the sample probe and last part is the detector jo pratyek spectroscopy madhe asto okay so a detector to process the nmr signal je kai signals etil rf receiver kadna ठीक आहे त्याचं त्याला सिग्नल मध्ये कन्व्हर्ट करायचं डिटेक्टर अँड रेकॉर्डर तो पार्ट असतो ठीक आहे सो लास्ट पार्ट इज द डिटेक्टर अँड रेकॉर्डर रेकॉर्डर टू डिस्प्ले द स्पेक्ट्रम जो आपल्याला फायनल स्पेक्ट्रम मिळतो तो रेकॉर्ड करून आपल्याला त्याची प्रिंट आउट देतो सो दीज आर द व्हेरियस पार्ट विच आर प्रेझेंट इन द एन एम आर युनिट हेअर यू कॅन सी द इमेज ओके सो टेक फिफ्टीन सेकंड to see the details on the second gear and watch the data okay uh so this part is called the sample probe ha huh? the main bhag hai ha बॉक्स मोठा जो मी कर्सर न दाखवते तो बॉक्स आपण एन एम आर प्रोब म्हणतो ओके आता पहिला पार्ट आहे मॅग्नेट पोल सो दीज आर द टू मॅग्नेट पोल दिस वन अँड दिस वन टू जनरेट द स्ट्रॉंग मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड खूप आपण जेवढं पाहिजे तेवढं करू शकतो सध्या रिसेंट आपण आतापर्यंत थाउजंड मेगा हर्ड्स पर्यंत गेलेलो आहे ठीक आहे सो यू कॅन जनरेट हंड्रेड मेगा हर्ड्स टू हंड्रेड मेगा हर्ड्स फोर हंड्रेड सिक्स हंड्रेड ऑर एट हंड्रेड so up to now there is a 1000 mega mega hertz magnetic field has generated uh this is the sieve coil theek hai ata evdo the strong magnetic field asel ata he don je ahet the strong magnetic field hai tancha magnetic field change karna thoda sa avgad jata aplyala ani khup motha magnetic field asel ani tela change karat asel manje for example 500 ahe ani 550 karaj asel mega hertz tar te thoda sa difficult asto यासाठी काय करतो आपण दिस सिप कॉईल्स वापरतो ओके 
स्विप कॉल क्या करता जस्ट चेंज द स्मॉल मैग्नेटिक फील्ड सो ओवरऑल फील्ड विल चेंज हियर पांचे जो मेगा हर्स आल समझा ओके मैं साढ़े पांचे पाजे सो वॉट आई विल डू सो आई विल जस्ट इन्क्रीज द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड ऑफ दीज टू सीप कॉइल्स ठीक है करते पन्ना मेगा हर्स दे सो टोटल विल बी फाइव फिफ्टी मेगा हर्स सो दिस वे वी कैन वेरी द टोटल मैग्नेटिक फील्ड अराउंड द सैम्पल ठीक है दिस इज द स्पिनिंग ट्यूब ये जे है ट्यूब दिखते सैम्पल होल्डर है ये तुम सैम्पल आना है ओके रोटेट होते रहते स्पिनिंग वर्टिकल पोजिशन मध्य है ओके सो दिस इज ऑलवेज इन ए वर्टिकल पोजिशन ओके नेक्स्ट इज द रेडियो फ्रिक्वेन्सी ट्रांसमीटर सो दिस इज द रेड लाइन यू कैन सी दैट दिस रेड लाइन विल ट्रांसमिट ट्रांसमिट द मैक्रोवेव रेडिए ठीक है माइक्रो सॉरी रेडियो फ्रिक्वेन्सी रेडियो विल ट्रांसफर्ट अराउंड द सैम्पल ठीक है एंड ज्यादा सैम्पल पास होती सैम्पल मधन जे का चेंजेस होते हैं दुसरी कॉइल है वहाँ रेडियो फ्रिक्वेन्सी रिसीवर एंड एम्प्लीफायर हि जी दुसरी कॉइल है ते चेंजेस नोट डाउन करते कलेक्ट करते पास करते ओके सो दिस इज द मेन पार्ट एंड हा शेवट का पॉइंट है कंट्रोल कंसल एंड रेकॉर्डर सो ये ऑटोमेटिक सीस्टीम आती तो मैं कॉम्प्यूटर बसु तुम्हारा जे का चेंजेस पाजे तुम्हें करू शकता ठीक है सो दिस पार्ट इज कॉल द वर्क टेसन और कंट्रोल एरिया ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट द एन एम आर इन इंस्ट्रूमेंट पॉइंट पैल बगू थोड़स जास्त डिटेल घतो कारण महत्व है uh, the first part is the radio frequency generator or radio frequency oscillator. या ठिकाणी आपल्याला रेडिओ येऊ पास करायचं आहे सॅम्पल मध्ये ओके तुम्ही मॅनेटिक फील्ड लावलं मॅनेटिक फील्ड लावल्यानंतर पुढचं काम आहे की रेडिओ फ्रिक्वेन्सी अप्लाय करणे सो युझिंग अँड आर एफ ऑसिलेटर क्रिएट द रेडिओ फ्रिक्वेन्सी रेडिएशन सो द विच पार्ट क्रिएट द रेडिओ फ्रिक्वेन्सी रेडिएशन इज कॉल द आर एफ ऑसिलेटर ओके ठीक आहे सो व्हॉट इज द मेन पार्ट ऑफ दिस रेडिएशन so this radiation will induce the transition in the nuclei of the sample from the ground state to the excited state so this is the second point once you pass the radio uh, radio frequency radiation it will induce the transition aje from a lower state to higher state aje from plus sign to negative sign okay so this source is highly stable controlled oscillator कारण आपला कंट्रोल पाहिजे जर थोडीशी काही चूक झाली तरी मोठा ऍक्सिडेंट होऊ शकतो सो वी नीड अ गुड कंट्रोल टू कंट्रोल द आर एफ ऑसिलेटर ठीक आहे सो इट इज माउंटेड ऍट अ राईट अँगल टू द पाथ ऑफ द फील्ड ऑफ द ओन अराउंड द सॅम्पल टू परपेंडिक्युलर टू द मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड जर तुम्ही इमेज मध्ये बघितला सो दिस फील्ड रेडिओ फ्रिक्वेन्सी आहे ह्याचं जे काही फील्ड तयार होईल इट विल ऑलवेज परपेंडिक्युलर टू द फील्ड जनरेटेड बाय दिस मैग्नेटिक फोल्ड नीचे लक्ष्य एन एम आर मध्य फील्ड एकमेक परफेन्डोकुलर प्रकार अरेजमेंट के लिए जी ओके दिस इज अ थर्ड पॉइंट द फील्ड और दिस फील्ड जनरेटेड बाय द रेडियो आर एफ ऑसिटर इज परफेन्डोकुलर टू द फील्ड जनरेटेड बाय द मैग्नेटिक मैग्नेट सॉरी मैग्नेट टू गेट मैक्सिम इंट्रैक्शन विथ द सैम्पल जर तक रिजन विचार रिजन का टू गेट मैक्सिम इंट्रैक्शन विथ द सैम्पल जर इंट्रैक्शन जाए अपने महत है स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी मे इट इज इंट्रैक्शन बिट्वीन द लाइट एंड सैम्पल जर इंट्रैक्शन जाए नहीं तो स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी पूर्णपने फेल हो काम करना नहीं है तो वी हैव टू अरेज लाइक दिस टू गेट द मैक्सिम इंट्रैक्शन विथ द सैम्पल दिस इज द थर्ड पॉइंट Okay. Uh, once the oscillator uh, radiates the sample with the RF radiation, now interaction will radio waves and samples. Uh, so these radio frequency are generated by the electronic multiplication of natural. Hey, hey, put the point. Hey, hold on. Hey, to achieve the maximum interaction of the RF radiation with the sample, the coil of the oscillator is wound around the sample container. That means you can bring it like this. Sample is a very important part. It is wound around the sample container. Wound around the sample container. to get the maximum interaction okay. uh, hard point after bagitlela hai perpendicular asnar hai to the applied magnetic field 
आता या ठिकाणी तुम्ही मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड किंवा रेडिओ फ्रिक्वेन्सी जनरेट करू शकता किती पाहिजे ते ओके यू कॅन हॅव सिक्स्टी मेगा हॅड मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड हंड्रेड मेगा हॅड मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड और टू हंड्रेड और थ्री हंड्रेड मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड अँड दिस इज डन सो दॅट द अप्लाइड आर एफ फील्ड शूड नॉट चेंज द इफेक्ट टू मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ द रेडिएशन जे काही चेंजेस होतील ठीक आहे हे चेंज करणार आहे ह्या टोटल मॅग्नेटिक फील्डचं अप्लाइड फील्ड चेंज होणार नाही फक्त आपलं इथं चेंज करत आहे त्यामुळं इंट्रॅक्शन व्यवस्थित झालं पाहिजे जर इंट्रॅक्शन व्यवस्थित नसेल तर काहीच काम करणार नाही सिस्टीम ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट द रेडिओ फ्रिक्वेन्सी नेक्स्ट इज द मॅग्नेटिक जे आपण दोन मॅग्नेट वापरलेले साईडला त्याचं काम काय बघूया सो इट इज युज टू आप सप्लाय द प्रिन्सिपल पार्ट ऑफ द फील्ड एच ओ हा स्ट्रॉंग मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड म्हणतो आपण त्याला याचं मेन काम काय स्ट्रॉंग मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड असेल टू हंड्रेड सिक्स हंड्रेड एट हंड्रेड आर थाउजंड हा विच डिटरमाइन द लॅर्मॉर आर प्रोसेसनल फ्रिक्वेन्सी ऑफ एनी न्युक्लियस जर तुम्हाला टी वायच्या पुस्तकात आठवत असेल प्रिसेसनल फ्रिक्वेन्सी एक आठ न्युक्लियस फिरतोय आणि थोडस मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड लावलं की त्याची फिरण्याची डायरेक्शन चेंज होते ठीक आहे डिटेलमध्ये जात नाही सो द मेन पार्ट ऑफ मॅनेटी इज टू प्रोड्यूस प्रिसेसनल फ्रिक्वेन्सी ऑफ एनी न्युक्लियस तर स्ट्रॉंगर द मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड the greater the line separation of chemical separated nuclear so remember this point jodo tumcha stronger magnetic field asel tevda tumhala signal cha separation vyavasthit milnar ahe thik hai mag jevha tumcha je separation pahije tumhala tyanusar tumhi magnetic field change karu shakta ani tumhala maithe hai magnetic field kase change karaycha hai main magnetic field change karaycha nahi je aple strip ahe strip coils yacha magnetic field thoda se change karaycha so here magnetic field of this you can change but you cannot change the magnetic field of the main magnet it is very powerful so just you change here magnetic field and you can change the total magnetic field so you can get the separation jodo just strong magnetic field asel tevda separation changla asel okay so always remember the stronger the magnetic field greater the line separation okay and the relative population of lower energy spin level increases in the sensitivity of the nmr jese tumche magnetic field changla asel to this is sensitivity changli rahte okay so this is the function of the magnet now let's see the feature of the magnet now if this magnet should give the homogeneous magnetic field ata what is mean by homogeneous magnetic field sangta il kunala what is mean by homogeneous magnetic field इक्वली डिस्ट्रीब्युटेड इक्वली डिस्ट्रीब्युटेड इमेज कर जातो आता आपले हे सॅम्पल आहे बरोबर हे टोटल सॅम्पल आहे आणि जे मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड करणार आहे जे मॅग्नेटिक फील्ड तयार होईल ते ह्या सॅम्पल बहुतेक सम सारख्या प्रमाणात डिस्ट्रीब्युट झालं पाहिजे नाही तर इथं थोडं जास्त या ठिकाणी थोडं कमी परत इथं जास्त असं असेल तर ते पूर्णपणे सिस्टीम फेल होईल काम करणार नाही व्यवस्थित सो दिस इज द मेन पॉइंट ऑफ द मॅग्नेट इट शुड गिव homogeneous magnetic field that is the strength and direction of the magnetic field should be constant over a longer period barobar je 5 minute dila 100 5 minute 150 5 minute asa hota kama nahi jar tumhi 500 megahertz apply kele with 500 asal 550 asal so throughout sample analysis it should be 550 megahertz okay that is called the homogeneous magnetic field and the strength of the magnetic should be very high at least to uh, 20000 gauss the magnetic field sir apun measure karto 200 sorry 20000 gauss aste theek hai next point is the type of magnet you can use the nmr one is the permanent magnet second is the electromagnet and third is the superconducting magnet and it is in uh, nowadays uh, this second type, third type of the magnet generally are present in the nmr system superconducting magnet okay uh theek hai apun itar thambuya 10:30 zalele ahet tumcha ata yacha nantar karyakram ahe to ho sir workshop kit vast ahe to kit vast ahe to 10:30 zalele 10:30 okay this it is already 10:30 we will stop here stop here okay sir okay sir okay sir jab tumhara kaya arjan asel थैंक यू सर